let's pray father in the name of jesus christ we thank you father for this day that you have given us so oh god lord jesus christ as we enter into the courts and they get with thanksgiving we just want to appreciate and worship you father lord jesus christ we call once again on your presence just to come and engulf us oh god as we worship and praise you father lord jesus christ oh father god may all evils be expelled from our lives in the name of jesus christ father god we cast every demon of sickness every demon of unbelief from us in the name of jesus christ lord we pray that father may you touch us by your supernatural hand lord and just help us even uplifting us from one glory to another glory of faith lord jesus christ may you call your children father i know lord we are living in the times when there's so many voices that are trying to kill your voice oh father but lord jesus christ you promised you will call your own father lord jesus christ may you call them this morning father lord jesus christ as we worship you father we pray the lord may you give us a father that inner ear even to catch your voice in this day father we thank you we appreciate you may you bless us and keep us oh god bless the visitors father we thank you lord jesus christ to see your children father bless my precious brother peter and Jeroge from maryland oh god may you keep him and give him strength oh father lord jesus christ i commit every soul that is here in your hands may you oh father just bless them and help them father even those who may be going through a situation father may you get them out oh father lord jesus christ for the tempests and typhoons in our lives oh god may you help us oh god speak to them in our lives oh god so you can calm them oh father we thank you father we honor you lord may you speak to us this morning in jesus Jesus name I do pray amen. amen may God bless you uh, nice seeing you you are highly welcome in the name of Jesus Christ brother Peter God bless you brother Mijo nice seeing you amen and all of you may God richly bless you and just keep you amen brother Marcus also nice seeing you this morning uh, Brother Kimani, I didn't see you for some time. I heard you had gone to Georgia. Nice to see you again. You are all welcome in the name of Jesus Christ. Brother Ray still, and your dear wife, and uh, those that can't see at the back there, you are highly welcome uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. May God richly bless you. And uh, we have here our kids uh, from uh, uh, our neighbors. Uh, may God bless you. Lazarus the brothers may God bless you nice seeing you also in the house of God this morning uh, I want uh, my brother to reflect this uh, scripture for me uh, on the board thank you so much the musicians um, I want uh, this scripture to be reflected the book of Amos Amos chapter 8 11 to 12 Amos 8 11 to 12 Amen. And as uh, that scripture is uh, being reflected, the psalmist said, Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Prophet Isaiah says, The grass with us, the flower fades, but the word of our God 
shall stand forever. Amen. Amen. Amos. Amos 8. Eleven to twelve. Behold, the days come, says the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, nor a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. And they shall wander from sea to sea, and from the north even to the east. They shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord, and shall not find it. Amen. You may be said it. Uh, I'll be looking at uh, the scriptures as... Uh, uh, I go along and uh, uh, we are going to break the service into two small portions. Uh, so uh, there's certain things we have to do. So I'll, uh, I'll divide it into two services. And uh, uh, right now I'm just depending on the leadership of the Spirit of God uh, just to guide me uh, to do the right thing. Uh, I just want to talk about, actually, I thought of this when uh, uh, we were here in the prayer time and uh, when uh, I left to begin to uh, jot a few things down uh, just to share with you this morning. And uh, I thank God because he's giving us a fresh manna uh, from the presence of the Almighty God. Uh, we are so appreciative to God just for being kind to us and uh, uh, for giving us uh, spiritual food in due season. Uh, I'm going to talk about spiritual famine in the land. And uh, before I go further, uh, I'm not promising that I'm going to go into the detail of this because it is... Uh, a very long and wide subject but my prayer this morning is that the Spirit of God would just direct my mouth to go into things uh, or to mention things from this subject that will uh, be of benefit to you at least something that can help you uh, to move from the level you are in right now into another level in Christ Jesus. Uh, in looking into this, just on the top surface, in looking into this, remember our text uh, is what we've just read from Amos 8, 11 uh, to 12. Uh, if you look at uh, uh, the definition of farming, uh, you can go in the dictionary and see how they define famine. Uh, if you look at Encyclopedia Britannica, it defines famine as extreme and protracted shortage of food. And this is mostly called by wars, caused by wars and drought. Uh, I'm talking about the natural fast before we can go to the spiritual. Uh, this uh, shortage of food is uh, basically caused by wars and drought, resulting in widespread hunger and a substantial increase in the death rate. Uh, famine is not something to be sought or desired but rather something to be avoided at all costs. Numerous agencies like FAO and uh, programs run by governments around the world as well as non-profit organizations pour staggering amounts of money and many hours into fighting hunger. 
But the problem here is that few pay attention to this uh, hunger that we are reading right here in the book of Amos. Uh, not many people are paying attention uh, to this uh, spiritual or famine of the word of God. And um, uh, if you look at spiritual hunger, may define it as a state uh, of uh, hunger arising from failure to experience the presence and joy of God. The ultimate cause is unbelief in the word of God. And of course, you understand that the majority of you who are sitting here, uh, the greatest sin you can ever commit is unbelief. Amen? Amen. Now, all other things that men will do which are contrary to the word of God, it is just because they do not believe the word of God. Amen. People live in sin, people commit adultery, people commit fornication, people drink, deal in drugs because they do not believe the word of God. Because if you believe that God says don't do this, I'm sure you will pay attention to your creator. So the greatest sin anybody can ever commit, it is the sin of unbelief. Amen. Now the solution to this uh, spiritual hunger is not physical but it is also spiritual. Now uh, we are living in a very interesting day to say and the reason why I'm saying so is that uh, we are living in the time when uh, this Bible has been translated into so many languages, even in the small, smallest languages, like in Africa, where we have so many dialects, uh, South America, across the world, right now, the Bible has been translated into almost, almost, I'm saying almost every language right now. But then now, it is very strange when the Bible predicts or says that there is going to be famine in the land and it's not going to be famine, that is the shortage of the natural food or water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. You see that? Now, just because you are in church, it does not necessarily mean that you are spiritually satisfied. It does not necessarily mean that you are feeding on God's word. Because I do understand that there are many reasons why people go to church. Now, some people go to church just... Uh, to sing and enjoy the good music. Yes, right. And uh, some people go to church because maybe uh, people of their category or of their class go to that particular church. So they go there. I remember many years ago, uh, we had a sister and this sister uh, had come to live in New Jersey and uh, she decided to quit church and when i was looking for her uh, to find out why she doesn't come to church no more and she told me she didn't like the way we sing she didn't like our songs and that's the reason why she was quitting church uh, well from that time i never heard from her where she went but uh, she wasn't going to any church so uh, people go to church for different reasons <laughs> Uh, but I would that I like good, good singing too oh, yeah. but you see when I'm choosing a church I'm not going to choose a church because of the songs because I can tell you we have churches and we have even people who don't go to church I remember when one time uh, to the guitar center on route 22 
and um, you know uh, we had some men who were there uh, they were playing they had a band and uh, one was playing a bass guitar one was playing this instrument another one this instrument and let me tell you when they began to sing about Jesus I had to stop what I was doing and just sat there and nodding my head <laughs> then after a short while they said we want just to take a little break and when they went out there was they lit cigarette they began to smoke I was so disappointed I was like how can these people saying such is only Jesus and they're singing with all their voice and you know they, they have practice in a way that uh, everything just falls in the place I was very disappointed see that singing is good but let me tell you you need the Word of God I remember we had um, a brother we had baptized and uh, he said you know what uh, I would like to join another denomination because I like the songs most of you have re listened uh, uh, to Brooklyn Tabernacle it's a denomination but those people can sing <laughs> you know so uh, people go to church for various reasons you know some people go to church just in any case anything happens to them at least they have some people they can learn to now i'm not going into the many reasons that bring people to church but you know uh you know there are just so many reasons why uh people go to church but if i was looking for a place to go to church i'm going to look for a church that preaches and stays with the word of god amen, amen. Praise God. As we had on Friday, knowing him is life. Amen. Praise God. Amen. And we know life, the devil can't challenge life. Because life is a reality. Amen. You see, the devil can challenge an idea. The devil can challenge a concept. But the devil cannot deny life. Amen. Amen. That's the reason why we need to get the word of God from this book into your soul, Amen. into our souls. And when you get the word of God from this uh, written Bible into your soul, you become the living word of God. Amen. Yes, I know there's some Bibles written the living word of God, but in actuality, the living word of God is you when you take this word into your soul, you become the living word of God, walking on two feet. Yes, sir. Then when the devil sees that life in you, that is what challenges the devil. Oh, yeah. And yes, this is the power that is shaking this hour. Yeah. It is life. It's the supernatural God amongst the people. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So you can come to church. As I've seen many people go to church and they begin to sleep. You see, they're not hearing the word of the Lord. People come to church and the mind are not even there. They are sitting here, but the mind is far, many miles away. You see that? But we want when we come here to say, Lord, help me. Amen. I want to hear Amen. from you. Amen. Now, in the times of Amos, Israel had things they rather do than spend time worshiping God. And I want you to bring this to your attention. If people are unwilling to find time to worship God, they will unlikely find time to feed on God's word. That's, right. That's, right. That's why we need time. 
to seek the face of God. We need time to worship God. We need time to hear from God. The prophet of God said this in the message at the seal of the Antichrist in 1955. He says this. He says, the churches are cooling off. We just must as well face that. The churches are getting worse and worse all the time. More preaching is being done than ever in the world. And less practice than we ever did in all the world. More preaching and less practice. You see that? The prophet of God said, every Christian must have a home church. Is that an amen? amen. Or that's my idea? No, sir. Is that amen? amen? But we have men and women who are floating from pillar yes, to post. Why? Yes, because they don't want anybody to be responsible yeah. over their lives. I normally ask people, do you take part in the Lord's table? Do you tithe? Do you wash feet? How can you say you are a Christian and they're the prophet of the age just told us and the Bible tells us that do not be like some who do not go to church. You see that? Amen. But do we pay attention to that voice? So anyway, he says this, more preaching is being done than ever in the world and less practice than we ever did in all the world. Just looks like it just keeps cooling off. Great revival strike the country. Men come in anointed of the Holy Spirit. They preach with everything that is within them. And the people right, walk right away as if nothing had ever happened. People live as if nothing ever happened. You see that? You can see the attitude just unconcerned. They don't care. See that? Now, there is got to be a reason for that. And if you study this, this tells what the reason is. Do you know the scripture says? Now, it's making reference to the same scripture I've just read. It says, the scripture says, there will be a time in the last days when there will be a famine strike the land and not for bread and water, but for hearing the word of God. And that, and, and that man would go from east, west, north, and south, seeking to hear the word of God, and fail, for, fail to find it. Just think of the times we are living in. And we are living in that time. This is the time. I believe when the prophet spoke, he foresaw the United States of America. Because it is the only place that I know of that would meet this description in this day. In the time of Amos, there was corruption everywhere. Immoral living. People living or people lived only for the moment, consumed with their pursuit of wealth. They had no time for God. And you can see that's the situation we are in right now. Paul in Second Timothy 4 1 to 5, in speaking to his son Timothy. His son in Christ, he says this, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ who shall judge the quick and the dead that is appearing and his kingdom. 
preach the word be instant in season and out of season reprove rebuke exhort with all long suffering and doctrine for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine the correct teaching of the word of God but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and be shall be turned into fables but watch thou in all things in due affliction do the work of an evangelist make full proof of their ministry could you turn in at the back there first timothy 6 20 21 i didn't uh, write that here first timothy 6 20 to 21 just want to read that from the board Amen. O Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust, avoiding profane and vain babbling and opposition of science falsely called, so called, which some professing have erred concerning the faith. Grace be with you. Amen. Amen. Now, I'm just trying to go a little quick here. Now, in uh, First Timothy, not First Timothy, in First Samuel, chapter three was one to three. First Samuel three one to three. Now, I just want to. I'm just trying to show you the condition, how they were, and you see how conditions are right now, and uh, for you to see the reason why we are having spiritual famine all over the world. The scripture says in first Samuel 3 1 to 3, it says this. And the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli. And the word of the Lord was precious in those days. There was no open vision. And it came to pass at that time when Eli was laid down in his place and his eyes began to wax dim that he could not see, getting blind. And there the Lamb of God went out in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was and Samuel was laid down to sleep. The Lamb was supposed to keep burning. Just like the way I told you, you see, God is responsible to set the fire on the altars of your heart. But then you become responsible to make sure that the fire does not go off. Now, if you look at the word precious, it simply means scarce. You hear people talk about precious jewels, meaning it's not easy to find them. And if you find them, you may not necessarily have the money to buy them. So you see, the word of God was precious in those days. Amen. Revelations, prophecies, visions, and personal conduct with God was rare and scarce. There was no flow of godly instruction, teaching, and guidance. You see that? The same days as we live today. And you can see today the churches are not preaching the word of God. They are preaching social justice, psychology, self-esteem, prosperity, good deeds, improvement of self by self, denominational rules and regulations. The word of God is not being preached. In Eli's time, the church had drifted. And I told you, if you look at the background, you have to read the chapters before 1 Samuel and 2 Samuel. Now, uh, the previous books, you see like the book of Judges. 
If you look at the last part or the last verse of the book of Judges, the Bible says, and in those days there was no king in Israel, and every person did what was right in their eyes. Just think about that. Let me do my thing. You can't tell me what to do. That's the spirit now in the land. You see that? That's how Israel was. That's how the book of Judges concludes. You see that? Then before you go to First Samuel, you go to the book of Ruth. And the first chapter of the book of Ruth opens by telling us that there was this man, Elimelech, his wife, Naomi, and the two sons. They're leaving the land of Palestine, or Bethlehem, Judah, and they're going to a foreign land, which was Moab. And the scripture tells there was famine in the land at that time. They leave to go to Moab. And I told you when we were looking at the prodigal son, when you drift and go far away from your zone, which is the message of the day, you are in for trouble. Yes, Amen. You see? Amen. Now, in the time of Eli, so you see, this is the background. So you can see there was a drift from God. There was no open vision. The word of God was precious. You could hear somebody say, and God spoke to me. And it was because of the, the system was corrupt and people had turned their backs against God. Eli had drifted from God and taught the precepts of men and not the word of God. Teaching what the church wanted to hear. His sons abused the sacrifices of the Lord and even committed adultery with the women who were coming to the temple. Could you imagine such a situation? And let me tell you, when sin comes into the church, the Spirit of God takes a flight. Praise God. God cannot be there when sin is being committed by the church members. God leaves the church. And that is the condition of the church in America and anywhere else. Amen. God has left. Now, you see the joining men and women, the smoking, the drinking, and all those kind of evil things are being committed by church people. Now, Samuel was also not really serious the way he handled the word of God. And you remember, if you look at, uh, just real quick here, if you look at the scripture, just the same place where we're reading in First Samuel chapter 3, you'll find out that the scripture tells us here, even when God was calling Samuel, Samuel did not even know that was God calling him. Why? Because he did not even know the Lord. You see, you can come to church, and if you are not careful, you will not even know it was God speaking to you. Amen. Could you imagine here God is calling Samuel. Read the whole of chapter 3. God is calling Samuel. And Samuel runs to the priest, Eli. He says, you called me. He said, no, 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 no I didn't call you. You see, which means... You see, a minister can stand here in this pulpit. Then God takes over and begin to speak to you. But you go saying, it's brother so-and-so was saying this. I didn't even like it that much. This is what he said. See that? Samuel said, but it's you, Eli, who called you. I heard your voice. No, that was not Eli's voice. That was the voice of God. They go sleep. I didn't call you. He goes sleeps again, and God calls Samuel, Samuel, and he runs again to Eli. He said, "You called me again." He says, "I didn't call you." Can you hear God calling you? Now, the scripture says that Samuel did not yet know the Lord. 
But I want you to understand this. He is serving as a priest in the temple. He was the one responsible for opening the doors and doing other duties in the temple. In the house of God at Shiloh. Yet he did not know the Lord. Yet the word of God had not been revealed to him. Think of that condition. Which means you can serve God. You can even preach and you don't know God. We need to meet him. And if you ever meet Jesus, you will never be the same. The old things pass away. Behold, all becomes new. See that? He didn't know the Lord yet. Just think about that. But anyway, the Lord had to reveal himself to him. At that time, God called. He went to Eli. Eli figured out, I think this must be God. He told him, my son, go sleep. When he calls again, say, say, here am I. Speak, Lord, thy servant heareth. Then when he said that, he had to recognize now, that's not Eli, the pastor, the priest, who had backslidden calling him. It was God calling him. And God spoke to him, and he told him of what he was going to do. To the house of Eli. If you read First Samuel chapter 2, God had sent a prophet to come and warn Eli, but didn't pay attention. He was so callous until he was so insensitive to the voice of God. Now, in the time we are living in, people are so insensitive to the voice of God. God will speak to them. He will instruct them. He will tell them this is the way to walk in. And they just walk away as if God didn't say anything. But thanks be to God. God is still speaking. Oh, yes. Praise God. Now, you'll find out it was rare to hear somebody saying the Lord has spoken to me in those days just like the way it is right now the prophet of God tells us look at the situation right now uh, there is no prayer meetings no more there is no agonizing with God no more but you see people just continue and flourish in the things of the world and they have no idea that the rapture is just about to take place there is no preparation look at home life is all messy the television has taken the time for god sports have taken time for god the video games phones have taken time for god the time we are supposed to be seeking the face of God, we are very busy doing other things. We don't even think about God no more. Now, in the prayer meeting here, we talked about, this is in Acts chapter 10. If you read the book of Acts chapter 10, you see there is a man called the Cornelius. And the scripture says he was a Roman officer. And then it also says he was a captain of the Italian band or Italian regiment. He was a good man. He gave arms to people. He was not a mean person. And also the scripture says he prayed always. You see that? Then the scripture says that the whole of his house was under that fear of God. You see that? My brother, you could just follow me with that. You could just check on that. If it's there from one there, you can just reflect that from one there so people can see. You know, I'm just saying this off the head. And So now, you see, if you look at this, just type in Acts 10 and then from verse 1 to somewhere. Just, just want you to see something here. You see, and I begin to think about this man was a Roman. 
he did not have uh, a Jewish heritage or background where you would say he was a man who grew up in the synagogue. You see that? Cornelius, he was a Roman army officer. Go to the second verse, my brother. It says a devout man. A man who is committed. And you see, he was not just committed to his job. I know the majority of us are so committed to our job, but less committed to the things of God. It should not be like so. It should be the reverse. Look at the man. A devout man. A de devout meaning he's committed his life to a special cause to him. If somebody's sleeping where you are, wake them up. I don't want to call the names. See that? A devout man. One that feared God. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. He feared God. He respected God. He reverenced God. He adored God. And not just he himself. The Bible says with all his house. All his house. Can any one of us say, I am my house? Yes, sir. We have decided to follow God. Amen. Or is only you and the rest of them have nothing to do with God. You see that? And then the scripture says he prayed to God always until God sent his angel to visit this man to tell him what to do. Amen. And let me tell you, if our homes, but you see our children have seen as power is not walking with God. They've seen us live in sin. They've seen us do things that bring disgrace to the name of the Lord. Then they have turned their back on God because of us. The prophet said it's not children's delinquency, it is parents' delinquency. And the scripture also says, train up a child in the way he should go. When he becomes old, he will not depart from that way. Where did the training? There is even no time to sit down and talk to our children about the goodness of Jesus. And before you open your mouth to speak, make sure you are following him. Amen. Amen. Learn from this man. Learn from this man. Could you imagine a home where God would send an angel? Oh, my, 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 my. <laughs> right now people say, oh, I don't believe in the angels. It, it doesn't really matter whether what you believe. But I believe it. Why? Because the Bible says so. Oh, yes. The Bible says so. That's why I believe it. <laughs> so you see, there are so many voices we are hearing right now. And this has caused people to really don't know even what to eat. So they just eat from a garbage can. I remember when I came to this country and uh, with the views and the ideas they show and tell us, they don't tell us the reality. They're not going there and showing those drug addicts and the putting on the television. No, they're getting the good places. But a whole lot of people here go to other countries and look for the worst places to take the pictures to say this is how that place is. You see that? I was somewhere, and when I was somewhere with the respect that we knew how the white people are, they own the nation. And I saw this man, a white man, open the garbage. And I can tell he was so hungry. And began to look in the dirt, the garbage can. And get something and was putting in his mouth. Of course, when people are hungry, they will eat anything. That's why there are a lot of theories out there. A lot of belief systems. That people are just eating them. Why? There's so many voices that people are listening to. 
we have intellectual voices we have taken the schools and let me tell you the school systems are in the house of the devil yes. And if your child has not met Jesus Christ, you've just sent your child into the jaws of the enemy. Meet Jesus first. I had my boy come to me and tell me, you know what? You see, I want to join military. And they said, yes, you will. But there is one thing. The requirement is, until you get the Holy Ghost, Woo! you not join military. Amen. Oh, I want to go to a university, miles and miles and miles. Oh yeah, that's fine. That's fine. But until you get the Holy Ghost, Woo! you're not going there. Right. Oh well, well, you know what? God, when He gives you children, He holds you responsible too. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. When it comes to raising our children, you are so weak without a backbone. You see. As I said one time, if your little girl or your little boy tells you, Mommy, I don't want to go to school, a whole lot of you will say, Over oh, my dead body, you'll take the belt. You'll do all it takes to make sure they go to school. But when they say, I don't want to go to church, okay, is that right? Is you are sending them to hell. Amen. They're still under your roof, then they're responsible. I remember some years ago, most of you who were here, you know, this uh, uh, young man called Kerry, I lived with him. He was a seven day Adventist, good boy. But I told him, as long as you are under my roof, you'll go to church. But I'm not stopping you from going to your church. But as long as you're under my roof, you're going to go to church. Because I don't want my children to say, but you see him, he didn't go. He doesn't go. No, we are all going to church. But when you leave my, under my roof, then you will be responsible to do anything you want to do. To live your life the way you want to live. But now I have laws here. You will have to keep these laws. He wasn't a young man. You see that? Amen. There are many voices, intellectual voices. You see, voices of pleasure, voices of Hollywood, voices of politics. And it looks like the voice of politics still seem to be so strong even in the church. So strong. If the governor comes over here, or in this, I see they go to big churches, not places like this. You see, they're honored as Christians and told to say a word. Nobody will tell that the governor, except you repent, you're going to perish. Nobody will tell them that. We have denominational voices. We have new age movements. We have the voice of evolution. We have the voice of atheism. We have the voice of science. We have the voice of great men and women, voices of philosophers, and voices of other religions, the Eastern religions. Like Taoism, we have Islam, we have Buddhism, we have Confucianism, and all that. And of course, this, it makes things to be a little difficult for many people. Because these religions have also religious books called holy books. So now somebody says, so which one is right? And you see, as long as you're looking at which one is right and all that, it's not just a matter of right and wrong. But you see, the Christians, the Christians have something supernatural with them. If the supernatural God is not following with you, then there is something wrong with your experience. Amen. 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 
is not just a concept it is the supernatural God following you the works that I do shall you do also now, I told you to those who were here yesterday, just right quick here, uh, to those who were here, I told you this, I said this, uh, this evangelist who just left the scene, uh, T.L. Osborne, when he went to India, he went to India one time as a missionary, and when he went to India, he had carried himself his uh, uh, good black book written on the Holy Bible. And when he went to India to preach uh, to people there about Christ, uh, the sheikhs, the Muslims came and they had also a black book but written on the Holy Quran. And uh, T.L. Osmond said, my book has the truth. And the sheikh said, no, 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 no. It is the Quran that has the truth. He said, no, 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 no. But the, the, the book, this book, the Holy Bible, you see this the Holy Bible? This is the only book that contains the words of God. They said, oh, no, no, no. It is the Quran. The Quran is the one that contains the Holy Word of Allah. And the, the discussion went on. You see now, his arguments now. You see that? So now, until the sex said, but hold on, hold on. Okay, in your book, it says in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 16, from verse 9 to the, towards the end, which that part is not appearing in many Bibles, but it is the Word of God. They have removed it from many because it says it's not inspired. But it is. They say, okay, from this verse to here, you are Jesus saying that, you see, you will lay hands on the sick and the sick shall recover. And if you drink any deadly thing, it will not hurt you. So far, we haven't seen you do that. So you must be a fuck. You know what? His crusade crumbled. He said, I knew I was defeated. Closed his crusade. Came back home in shame. Wondering, where is Jesus? It was not until his wife Daisy told him, there is a man here, his name is William Branham. Come and see what is going on. And he came in. And he said, when he came in, he saw a little man. Never went to school. You could see the way he's talking. He spoke colloquial English, the Kentuckian English, the common, the street language. But you know what? There was something special. He brought the Almighty God to the people. He didn't bring theology to the people, but he brought the Almighty God to the people. Christ the same, yesterday, today, and forever. He brought Jesus to the people. And he said, let me go see what is going on there. And he went in there, and at that time, Barbara was preaching a message. If you ever meet Jesus, you will never be the same again and let me add on this whether you accept him or you don't accept him you will never be the same Amen. Pilate never remain the same Amen. Amen. even death when death met Jesus from Calvary death has never been the same from Calvary death lost the power God lost the stinger death has no stinger right now Praise God. Amen. Thank God for Calvary. Amen. Because there, death is conquered. The grave is conquered. Hell is conquered. Every sickness is conquered. Sin, lust, and passion are conquered. Blessed be the name of the living God. So now towards the end, he said it's time to pray. And he saw discernment. Here is a man who can tell you where you come from, the address, what has happened to your life, and yet you've never told anybody. And he said, but who is that that just spoke to you? It is not this Kentuckian man. It's just the almighty God, Jesus Christ. As he said, you remember in the book of John, and the man said, how did you know me? Hallelujah. You see that? Amen. Oh, praise God. Amen. 
there was a little child blind and this child was totally blind little girl was brought and you see the prophet of God held this little girl very close to himself and he said in a firm small still voice and he said Satan you're a liar you know you are defeated you cannot stand before the Almighty God I bind you right now to leave the girl in the name of Jesus Christ and he turned let loose and turn and say honey do you see and the girl had received his sight until as well as born is sitting there he said as we were in the Pentecost we'll be throwing chairs and shaking the head of the pastor and making a drama he said I never saw that but I knew I was in the presence of Jesus Christ Amen. 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 Just in another skin, Amen. walking the streets of Amen. America. Amen. Amen. Oh yes. Amen. Voices. Tielobon says he could hear voices say, "You can do it." He went to Bobrana. He said, "Do I have a gift? Do I have a gift to do this?" He said, "Brother Osborne you find man but you don't have the gift but you can operate the word because the word heals. locked himself for seven days fasting and praying then he went back to India when he went to India this time he had learned from the prophets of God from the prophet of God that Jesus still heals and he went back to India he says now I've come with Jesus he crippled the Islamic religion he crippled the religions of the East. I remember 1972 when T.L. Osborne came to Kenya. Most of you come to Kenya, live in Kenya, Russia General Hospital in Kisumu. It was empty. The ambulance cars were going to the campground and brought the message, the books of Brabranam, and gave to people God had spoken to us in this age. Well, but he allows me towards the end, he took his route. I don't judge him, I'm not his judge, but I leave it there. That is up to God. But anyway, the physician said, if this man continues here for two months, we're gonna close the hospital. Now, why am I saying this? What I'm telling you is that Jesus is not a concept, it's not an idea is a reality and until you meet the person of jesus christ you just have an idea because you read the book you just have an idea because you read the bible you are still missing the thing because this message is not just the books and the tapes this message is jesus christ on display in your life that's what this message is all about Praise God. People have to see Jesus Christ walking on two feet. People have to see the supernatural God. And this is what silences the devil in this age. It's not an idea. It's when people see the sick getting healed. It's when people see Jesus doing the same things he did in your life. They can deny it. Science can deny it. Nobody can deny it. The Muslims can deny it. It is the truth. Amen. But you see us in the message, we have the greatest message, but we have leaned on the intellectual side of the message, but no life. That's the problem. That's the problem yes. Amen. 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 You see that? Amen. You can never be the same when you meet Jesus. Amen. Right quick, right quick, right quick here. Amen. So there's so many voices and all these voices, the goal is one to attack the precious word of God. Amen. Now, a whole lot of Muslims do not know that the, fa the first time when the Quran appeared was in the ninth century. Now, the Bible had been there for centuries. See that? The fourth century we had the Bible. 
Now, if you read the Quran, you'll find out the Quran is written to contradict and attack the Bible. That's the reason why the Quran says Jesus did not even resurrect from the dead. They say it is Judas, perhaps, that was crucified. They don't believe in the shedding of blood there is no remission of sin. And the whole of other things they believe, it is all the goal is one to attack the Bible. We have now this idea. It's not, it's not a new idea. Atheism is not a new idea. It has been there. Just, that's why the Bible says that uh, 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 anybody saying there is no God is a fool. It's not now people are saying that. It's an idea that has been there. But now it has been magnified so much in America that we have a lot of godless people teaching in these schools thinking that they are master of all knowledge to teach science and tell people there is no God. You see that? That if there is God, show me. Prove to me. But if you ask them, can you disapprove the existence of God? They say, no, it's not on our shoulders to prove that. You see that? So now, if you, they, say, they say, you see, the universe came as a result of the Big Bang Theory. They say you came from fish. But you see, if you look at this, it becomes just like an, another religion. It's not science. Evolution is not science. Now, let me say this up front. Now, I'm not against science. I'm not against science. But I know science comes short. Science cannot explain to us God. Science is not everything. And science is supposed to be based on proof. Observation. Question. Do we have any scientists who observed somebody coming from a, you know, human being, the, the, the transition from a fish to a human being? I know you tell me, oh, you see, I read in the books and I saw the books written, somebody having a head flat like this. No, 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 that's a lie. There has never been a human being or something ever lived on the earth like that. The artists do those things. When you hear, oh, we found the, the skull of Lucy, it's a bunch of lies. Amen. Oh, you see what Zinjanjo was, that, that was an, an ape. The skull of an ape. It has nothing to do with man. Man has always been man from the beginning to the end. Amen. And a fish has always been a fish from the beginning to the end. Amen. It's all to deny that God created the heavens and the earth. If you ask them, so when will this change to something else? They say, it is going to take millions and millions and millions. You see the lie of the devil? In 1986, there was an eruption on Mount St. Helena. And we had these atheists who called themselves scientists. Uh, it killed a whole lot of people. Homes were destroyed. But then now, after about uh, a couple of months, they went back to that place and got the coal, uh, the, the rocks now, the, the, the coal. They got them to do carbon dating. And uh, when they did that, that's, you know, you hear the scientists say, oh, you know what, this rock, we have uh, found out this rock has been there for over these millions of years. It's not true. It's all a bunch of lies. It's not true. So they pick a rock from there that has just come out from that eruption and cold, and they did carbonating. And when they did that, you see, the method showed that that rock has been there for over 10 million years. This made one of these men to question what they have all believed. And he went to find out it's just a bunch of lies. He became a Christian. 
You see, so these are the voices that are there to take you away from God. And they're all attacking one book, the Bible. So these voices are to attract our attention from God. I think I'll have to close somewhere because there's something else I want to do now. Now, look at Jesus at the age of 12. He said, he said this, don't you know that I should be about my father's business at the age of 12? At the age of 12. Just think about that. He's talking about the father's business. Can our children, can, uh, can we say this? Another reason you see why there is famine is because the senses of many people are dulled with drugs, smoking, and whiskey. Many people in the pulpit who have never met God. But in the midst of all this, still there is a small, still voice speaking. It is the voice of Jesus. He's still calling his own. He is calling. Jesus is calling you. Hear his voice. Praise God. I think I should look for a place to end because we have to go to another level. I wanted to go to right quick. And uh, I'm looking at the time there, so if we continue, I might not, uh, I don't want to keep here that long. Uh, so I just want to go to this real quick. So maybe God willing, we can pick from <laughs> and continue a little bit. Uh, I wanted to go to the second level as we had told you before. Uh, I brought a report to you. Before we do this, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you, Father, for this time. May you help us, Lord Jesus. Keep us close to you. Give us the ear to hear your voice as you speak to us, O oh God. We need you. We thank you. In Jesus' name, I do pray. Uh, as I told you before, there are, I had uh, presented the case of uh, Joshua there and Mikhail there to you.